The movie begins on a one sunny day, Satsuki, who is 10 years old, and Mei, who is 4 years old, along with their father, Tatsua, drive towards their new home on a rural road. The girls are excited about the move because it will bring them closer to their mother, Yusuko, who is ill in the hospital. Their house is old and in disrepair, but the girls find it charming and immediately start exploring. They open all the windows and doors before bravely going up the stairs to the attic. They hear faint rustling in the darkness above and an acorn falls down the steps. Intrigued, the girls go upstairs and shout into the darkness. When they receive no response, Satsuki goes to the opposite end of the attic to open the window, while Mei notices dark, fuzzy objects in the wall, staring at them intently. Satsuki goes back downstairs, but Mei's curiosity is sparked. She cautiously puts her finger into a crack in the wall and startles a bunch of black sootballs, managing to catch one in her hands. When she goes downstairs, she encounters Granny, an elderly neighbor who has been keeping an eye on the house. Granny notices that Mei and Satsuki's hands and feet are covered in soot and exclaims that they have probably come across Susawatari, or soot sprites, which will likely leave soon now that people are in the house. Granny's grandson, Kanta, appears outside and shouts that the house is haunted. Granny scolds him and he runs away. That night, the family enjoys a bath together while the house groans and creaks in the wind. The girls start to feel anxious, but their father encourages them to laugh, saying that their laughter will make any spirits in the house go away. And indeed, as they laugh together, the group of Susawatari leaves the house through the roof and drifts away on the wind. The next morning, Satsuki prepares and puts together lunch for her family. She places Mei's lunch in a bento box and says goodbye as she leaves for school. Tatsua, who is a professor at a local university, works from home while Mei plays outside. While playing, she notices two ears resembling those of a white rabbit sticking out of the grass. She watches as a small, semi-transparent creature walks past her towards the house. She follows it until it scurries away and hides under the porch. She follows them along a path through the bushes, losing her hat in the process, until they reach a large camphor tree. They disappear into a hole beneath the tree's roots. Mei accidentally falls into the hole and lands in a mossy hollow where she encounters a larger version of the creatures she was following. The creature introduces itself with a series of roars that Mei interprets as Totoro. Mei falls asleep on Totoro's furry belly. Satsuki returns home from school to discover that Mei is missing. She and her father search for her until Satsuki finds Mei's head near the edge of the woods. Satsuki and her father find her sleeping in a clearing among the bushes. Confused, Mei tries to retrace her steps back to the tree where she encountered Totoro. When she becomes upset that she can't find it again, Tatsua explains that she may have come into contact with a forest spirit who doesn't want to be found at the moment. They walk together around the property to the large camphor tree where Mei fell into and express their gratitude to the spirits for watching over Mei. That afternoon, the family goes on a bike ride further into town to visit the girl's mother. They pass by Granny and Kanta working in rice paddies, and Kanta and Satsuki stick their tongues out at each other. At the hospital, the girls express to their mother how wonderful the new house is, and Mei boasts that when Yusuko is well enough to come home, she will sleep with her in her bed. The family enjoys their time together, and Yusuko brushes Satsuki's hair. One day at school, Satsuki is surprised to see Mei and Granny waiting for her outside. Although Mei was under Granny's care that day while Tatsua went to university, she only wants to be with Satsuki. Satsuki agrees to let Mei stay in school with her, with the teacher's permission. As they walk home that afternoon, a sudden rainstorm catches them off guard. Satsuki and Mei find shelter under the roof of a small shrine until Kanta approaches and silently offers them his umbrella, although he does so with a bit of roughness to hide his kindness. Later, Satsuki and Mei return the umbrella to Kanta's mother, who was unaware of Kanta's kind gesture, though he was secretly pleased with himself, before heading to the bus station to wait for their father. While the sisters wait, wearing their rain gear and holding an extra umbrella, Mei becomes tired and Satsuki carries her on her back to let her sleep. Suddenly, Satsuki notices two clawed feet standing next to her. She looks up and sees Totoro standing beside her. Realizing that Totoro has nothing to protect himself from the rain except a large leaf, she offers him the extra umbrella. Delighted with the shelter and the sound of raindrops on the umbrella, Totoro roars with joy as headlights appear down the dark road. Satsuki becomes puzzled when the headlights start to bounce. A bus arrives, but it is no ordinary bus, it is a large cat-like creature. Catbus grins widely at them as Totoro hands Satsuki a package wrapped in a leaf before boarding the bus and departing. 
Tatsuya arrives on the regular bus, apologizing for being late. The girls walk home with him and open the package to find that it is filled with acorns. They go outside to the garden and plant them. That night, Satsuki and Mei are awakened by sounds outside and discover Totoro, who has Tatsuya's umbrella, along with a group of smaller Totoros, walking around the garden in a procession. They join them outside and imitate their dancing to encourage the acorns to grow. Saplings sprout up and quickly grow larger before merging into one enormous tree, similar to the story of Jack and the Beanstalk. The girls cheer as Totoro pulls out a large spinning top and stands on it. They ascend the trunk of the tree and sit on the high branches together, creating music with hollow gourds. The next morning, the girls wake up to find that the tree has disappeared. However, they notice that the seeds they planted have already started to sprout. One afternoon, the girls enjoy a picnic with Granny, who has prepared a fresh meal using vegetables from her garden. She tells them that fresh vegetables will help their mother recover. Tatsuya receives a telegram from the hospital, causing Satsuki to worry about her mother. She rushes to Kanta's house to call her father. After contacting the hospital, he calls her back to assure her that her mother is fine but won't be able to come home that weekend due to a setback in her treatment. Despite his reassurances, Satsuki takes the news hard and becomes upset with Mei when she fails to understand why their mother can't come home. Granny explains to Satsuki that their mother should be fine, but Satsuki starts to cry and fears that her mother might pass away. Mei sees this and decides to go to the hospital to give her mother an ear of corn in the hopes of making her feel better. No one notices Mei leaving. By the time Satsuki realizes that Mei is missing, she is already gone. The entire neighborhood joins in the search for Mei while Satsuki frantically searches everywhere, feeling remorseful for yelling at her. A tense moment turns into relief when Satsuki determines that a shoe found in a nearby pond does not belong to Mei. Still desperate to find her, Satsuki returns home and asks for permission to enter Totoro's realm. She discovers the hole in the tree roots where Mei fell and encounters Totoro. Tearfully, she pleads with him to help her find Mei. Happily willing to assist, Totoro takes Satsuki to the top of his tree and summons Cadbus, who transports her directly to Mei, who is sitting alone by the side of the road. After learning that Mei got lost on her way to the hospital, Cadbus offers to take them there. Perched in a tree outside their mother's window, the girls see their father visiting. They leave Mei's corn on the windowsill and write a get well message on the husk. Cadbus takes them home. In the end, Mei's and Satsuki's mother finally returns home, while Totoro and the other spirits watch them, unseen.